Hi, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 12 students in data management who are studying the first unit on counting principles. In this video, we'll look at some permutations and combinations review material handed out in class. In particular, this video will address this question. So if you want to pause now, feel free. You know, you can pretty much pause anytime you want. Anyway, let's look at this question. So fundamentally, it asks how many permutations of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are there? Um, so there's the numbers and we need to permutate them. Permutation, fancy word, meaning rearrange or put into different orders. So the way I like to approach it is I think about the nine positions that we need to fill with these nine objects. So here's one example of the different, here's one example of a permutation um, that I need to count. So it's just the nine numbers rearranged. So here are the key things to keep in mind as we do this question. Because it's a permutation question, we know that this is a question about arranging or rearranging. So obviously order matters. The original set of objects that I'm arranging or rearranging, um, all of the items are unique in that set. And we are doing nine unique items arranged into nine positions. So I could use permutations, except for because it's nine objects into nine positions, I'm probably gonna end up using a lot of factorial notation instead. But these are obviously just the same idea. So let's see. So first of all, what if I just wanted to answer this question? How many permutations of the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine exist? So if we go right back to fundamental counting principle, I'm first gonna make a decision um, of the nine objects, I have nine choices as to which number goes first. So it's important to note, I'm not writing the number nine here. I'm saying I have nine choices as to which number to put in that first position. Once I've made that decision, there's now only eight objects left from my original set. So I now have eight choices as to what goes in this set. And then now there's only seven choices left and six choices and so on. So I'm basically doing a series of choices to create the number of rearrangements. And because this comes from a tree diagram and I'm permuting these things, because each of these choices has to be made to create one nine digit rearrangement, we'll be multiplying between each of these decisions. And so that fundamentally is using the fundamental counting principle. And of course, we know that that is much shorter to think about as just simply nine factorial. So let's look at the first actual question that was asked of us. It says, um, so how many permutations of these numbers start with the number one? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this first position, put the number one there and take it away from my set. So this is not any math that I'm doing because that's not a choice. I was told to start with the number one. So I really now have eight spaces left to fill and I have eight unique objects in which to put them. So to fill these eight spaces from these eight unique objects, it would be a permutation of eight objects into eight positions. Of course, we know that simply as eight factorial. And I'm gonna as well get up my calculator and do the math here. Eight, oops, eight factorial, 40,320. So next question. Part B says how many permutations, blah, 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 and with an odd digit. So the ending digit must be odd and odd numbers available to me in the original set are here. Now I know that in the previous conversation, I always started with the first digit, but that's only because I could start wherever I wanted. But because I have some sort of restriction related to the end digit, I'm gonna start my thinking with the end digit. When I put something here, I have five choices to make, the one, three, five, seven, or nine. So I have five choices as to what fills that position. The rest of the spots can be anything, anything. So once I fill this position, so imagine I filled it with a seven, I would have eight digits left. And if I didn't fill it with a seven, if I filled it with say the one, I still have eight digits left. So no matter which choice I make amongst these five choices, I still have eight objects left over to fill eight positions so that's a permutation of eight objects into eight positions. So what would this math look like? So those eight positions would be filled with eight objects. So that's eight factorial. 
and then multiply by five because I also had to make the decision about which object to end with. So eight factorial times five. So we just saw in the last question what eight factorial is. So multiplying by five, 201,600. Next. Now I needed to start and end with an odd digit. So I have restrictions related to the first and the last digit. And of course, here's the odd digits available to me. So I'm going to make these two decisions before I make any of the decisions on the num other numbers because there's no restrictions there. Um, so I have five choices to make regarding what the first digit is. Once I place a digit there, I now only have four choices left as to what to put at the end, right? So if I put a five at the beginning, I now have four choices as to what goes at the end. And then that would leave me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers left to fill these seven positions. So that's just a straight permutation of seven objects in seven positions. So the math I would do would be five times four times seven factorial. Um, now, I wrote it like this because that's the order in which I thought about it. So I made this choice, then just this choice, then these choices. But certainly we know that a multiplication is commutative. So you could write it like this and you would obviously get the same answer. And so what is that answer? So five times four times seven factorial is 100,800. So 100,800. Next. Now we need to start and end with eight and nine. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to use different colors here. So I need to start and end with eight and nine. Now, so I have, when I fill the start position, I only have two choices. It's either an eight or a nine. So I have two choices. And then whichever one of these I pick, I only have one choice for that final digit. Then the rest of the numbers in between, there are seven positions here and there would be seven numbers left over. So that's just a straightforward permutation of seven objects into seven positions. So the math would be two times seven factorial times one if you want, but of course, times one is mathematically irrelevant. And two times seven factorial is 10,080. Now I need to have eight and nine in adjacent position. So adjacent means next to each other. So eight and nine need to be next to each other. So the way I like to do that is I like to think of eight and nine as a single number called the number eight, nine. And we'll, you know, don't worry, don't stop the video now or else you'll miss some key things. So I'm considering this to now be a single number. And for example, I could put it here because it still takes up two positions. So let's imagine that we put the number eight, nine right here, or we could put the number eight, nine right here or whatever. So hold on, let me clear some of this mess. Okay, so what we really have now is we really have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things to rearrange. And because this thing, this number eight, nine, takes up two positions, we really need to consider that we actually only have eight positions because, again, we have this double wide, right? So what I have is eight objects. And again, let me just write them out again. Uh, so there's my eight objects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I need to rearrange them into eight positions. So that would be just simply eight factorial. But um, I called this eight, nine, and I did all my math as if it was eight, nine, but it could have been nine, eight. There's no reason why the eight has to be before the nine. The nine could have been before the eight. So all of this math would hold true. So I'm just going to say multiply by two factorial to consider that the two objects I glued together can also be interarranged amongst themselves, right? It could be eight, nine or nine, eight. So what would that give me? So that 40,000, whatever number again, times two. So the answer would be 80,640. Now the next one says that I need to have eight and nine separated. And that's going to be pretty complicated because am I going to separate them by one character and do my math like that? 
or separate it with two characters, do my math like that, separate it with three characters. And again, everything that I'm doing right now could be reversed with nine and eight. So that would take me a while to do what we call by cases. So again, by cases, I would have to consider one position between them and then two positions between them and then four positions between them and so on, which isn't, you know, it's possible, but it's a lot easier to think about this. Eight and nine being separated is the exact opposite of what we did in the last question, which is where eight and nine are adjacent or next to each other. So in fact, this is the opposite or complement, right? Use the vocabulary of what we did in part E of this, of this question. So I'm not going to calculate this by actually doing all the different cases. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that of all possible permutations, either the 8 and 9 are separated or the 8 and 9 are together. And I know, based on what we did in question 8, oops, oops, wait, my computer's slow. Uh, based on what we did in question 8, we know that there are 80,640 ways of having um, eight and nine together. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how many total rearrangements are there without worrying about any restrictions. And we've already looked at that, but we'll do it again. Without considering any restrictions, there are nine objects to fill nine positions. So there are a total of nine factorial total rearrangements, which would be uh, 362,000. 880. And in all of these arrangements, either the 8 and 9 are separated or they are together. And I know that if they are together, there are this many. So if 8 and 9 are separated, we just have to remove from the total, com the total arrangements all the times when they were together. So it would be 362,880 subtract 80,640, which would be 282,240. Oops, that's a four. Okay, so a lot of times this will come up in combinatorics, which is that it's a lot easier and faster and possibly the only possible way of doing it is to think about what the opposite scenario would be. And that's what we did here in part F. Now, part G, how many have the eight before nine? So we could do it by saying, well, this is where the eight is before the nine. So is this. So is this. There's a lot of different ways to consider how the eight could be before the nine. So it seems to me like it would take an awful long time for me to consider all the different places that the eight and nine could be. Um, but there's actually a really easy way to get this answer quickly. And that is to consider the fact that in all of the rearrangements, so again, the total number of rearrangements, which we just looked at, um, which is 362,880. In all of these, only one of two things happened. Either the eight was before the nine, or the nine was before the eight. And if we just did random rearrangements, half the time the eight would go first and half the time the nine would go first. So we're just gonna take the total rearrangements and divide by two because it's basically half. I mean, it is half. Half of the time the eight would be placed first and half the time the nine would be. So again, that's kind of an interesting question because it would take you a long time if you didn't realize that it would just be half. How many permutations have the five in the middle position? So here's the middle position and here's the number five and it has to go here. So that five is not part of my math and this position is not part of my math either because it has to be the five. So all I have to consider is the other eight numbers to fill the other eight positions. So that's just eight objects to fill eight positions or just eight factorial. And we've seen this a few times. Eight factorial is 40,000, 
320. Now I have to have the 1, 2, and 3 somewhere in the first three positions. Okay, so here's the first three positions. And so therefore there are six positions over here. So we need to have the 1, 2, and the 3 here. And that means that these ones are going to be the 4, 5, oops, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 must fill the blank bottom. So let's worry about these numbers first. I have three numbers, one, two, and three, and they have to fill these three positions. So three numbers to fill three positions, that's three factorial. I also have to fill these six positions, and it's these six numbers that have to fill them. So six numbers filling six positions, that's six factorial. And of course, to permutate all nine objects, I have to do this and also this, so I have to multiply my answer together. So 3 factorial times 6 factorial it is 6 times 720 Ooh. and 6 times 720 is 4,320 and that's it. Okay so I hope that was helpful just a reminder that you can't study math by watching me do math in a video. Please make sure that you do math so that you practice what you need to learn. Okay? Good luck studying. Bye.